welcome to another one of my videos. Um, the last recipe that I did, the um, Dominic Ansel chocolate cake recipe, I really enjoyed um, like showing you, even though he's shown you, I enjoyed showing, demonstrating how to do it, how easy it is to do. Um, so I'm doing another cake recipe. This one is a classic. This is super, super easy. Um, it's a Victoria sponge cake, um, but I'm doing the English version with the Chantilly cream rather than the American buttercream. Um, so, hang on, I just need to plug my stand mixer on, hang on a minute. Oh my gosh. Okay. <clears throat> so you don't have to use a stand mixer, you can just use, um, you know, pure muscle, but I don't have any of those, so we're just going to use a mixer. Okay, all the ingredients are listed below in case you haven't already looked. If you want to bake along, then that's really great. So first things first, let's um, just cream the butter on its own without the sugar until it kind of goes white and pale. Okay, please work. Oh, hang on, I haven't even plugged my thing in. Okay, so, yeah, you need a beater. Use a beater, or if you're doing it by your arm, use your muscles. And just let that mix a couple of, like, just literally two minutes on high. Actually, wait, I forgot to say, before you do anything, you need to put your oven on to 180 degrees Celsius. Don't forget to do that, because then you'll be waiting around. And caramel mixing. Okay, so after you've mixed the butter for um, literally two minutes, um, it's creamy, as you can see, so we're just going to put in... What's that the door? No. Okay, so we're just going to put in our sugar. And put it back onto the mixer and mix. You want it creamy and light. That's what we're looking for. Just give it the bowl a little scrape down to make sure. Oh, hang on, was that the door? Hello? Okay, I'm back. I swear the postman just waits until I'm doing these videos, but anyway. So, yeah, got your um, butter and sugar, and we're just going to scrape the bowl down to it gets all the bits that it's missing. Okay, so when that's finished mixing, um, just leave it a minute and come to your other ingredients. You've got your eggs and your milk, um, and then you've got the flour and the raising agents. So, we just want to put the flour and the raising agents into a bowl together, um, sieve it, oh goody, and then we need to put our eggs and milk into one bowl. really big eggs and they're from Aldi as well. <clears throat> Little tip if you didn't know this, you should always um, crack an egg on a flat surface, not a like, rounded surface, like the side of a bowl, don't use that, use a flat surface. Oh, well that was saved. Right. So, put your milk in with your eggs. I've got shed in it again. So give your eggs and your milk a little mix. You still here? Oh great, you made it this far. We might as well keep going. Okay, we're gonna put the wet and the dry into the um, butter and sugar mixture. But we're gonna do it, we're gonna start with the um, dry ingredients and we're gonna end with the dry ingredients. So you wanna do it, not, not all obviously in one go, just put like a third in. And then half of the wet. Back onto the mixer. Or back into your muscles if you've got some guns. Oh my gosh, I'm getting all of the ball. Okay, fine. So, okay. So mix that and then we'll see where we're at. It doesn't need long mixing at all while you're doing this stage. It literally just needs like a minute. Um, 
and that's it. So again, we're going to put in some dry. The rest of the wet. Mix it again. And finally, the last of your dry ingredients, put all those in. And mix. Okay, final stage of the cake mix, we're just going to add about half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. This is optional, you don't have to do this, but I'll do it. And just mix that one final time. Oh, great! Okay, so that's your mixture done. Your cake mixture should be all, um, all mixed and incorporated now. So, the next step is to spread it into your cake tins. For this, I'm just going to use one cake tin, but if you've got smaller cake tins, you can just divide them into two or three, however many you want. But remember, the, sh the shallower the tins, the less time that they'll need cooking. So, um, well, plan that accordingly. Okay, so I'm just going to dump all this batter into the cake tin. And just level it out. The cake is ready to go into the oven. Um, you want to, it's going in for about th uh, 20 minutes. So you want it to be golden and you want it to spring back when you press the middle of it. We'll also do the, the knife test as well. But um, so yeah, it's about 20 minutes. Here goes. Good luck. We are back. The cake is, um, is done. It's just cooling behind me. Um, it actually took a little bit longer than the 20 minutes. I think it was because um, I, I, I used it all in one rather than separate it into two or even three pans. Um, that's why it took a little bit longer, but um, it was in there for about 35 to 40 minutes. So just check your timing accordingly to depending on the size of the pans that you're using. Anyway. Okay, so while the cake's cooling, I've got my jam and I've got a little bit of Prosecco that I'm just going to put into the jam actually. Not, I've not got a drinking problem, like don't panic. Um, I've just, uh, well, who doesn't, want, who doesn't like a bit of Prosecco, right? So we're just going to add a little bit of this to the, oh my gosh, I thought that was going to go everywhere. So I'm just going to add a little bit, like maybe a quarter of a bottle. It's one of these little bottles, obviously not a quarter of a big bottle. Then you have got a drinking problem. So if you add too much, obviously it will make it make the jam like too runny, and then when you try and spread it on the cake, it will just run down the side. So you don't want it. So it's still it's still thick. It's still spreadable. Um, so I'm going to put this back into the fridge while we make the cream and prepare the cream for the cake. Um, to firm back up, but I just wanted to try it actually. It's really good. Jam and Prosecco, huh? Who knew? Mm -hmm. The jam is in the fridge. While the jam's chilling out, we're going to move on to the. Oh, hang on, let me put this Prosecco away. Hang on, wait. The jam's in the fridge, so while that's chilling out, um, I'm going to make the um, cream. The, I'm going to whip the cream, um, have it ready, and then I'll put that into the fridge for 10 minutes um, along with the jam. And then when I'm making and building the cake, I'll have it already done. Okay, so let's make the cream. Let's whip the cream even. So I want to do quite a lot because I want to be able to decorate the top of the cake. And I'm not entirely sure yet when I cut it whether I'm going to do it into half or do three layers. So I'm going to do about one and a half of these, um, are they elderly? I'm doing about one, of the, one and a half of these um, creams, these types of creams. So, let's whip. Me whip, whip, watch me nae nae, why me do it? Now watch me whip. Okay, the cream is whipped, um, so we're going to put it into our piping bag and then just Stick it in the fridge. Okay, so we're going to leave it in the fridge and then we'll get it out when we need to build the cake along with the jam. I'm going to attempt to slice the cake. I'm going to try and do it into, um, cut it into three, 
but it might be a disaster, so if it is, then we'll just wing it and see how it goes. Let's do this. And then we'll tidy up and come back in a bit when the cake's cool and the jam and the cream has chilled. So, see you in a bit. Okay, so while we've got everything cooling down and chilling out in the fridge, we want to prepare our um, strawberries, because even though we're using jam, um, we're going to put some uh, fresh strawberries in the layers and then we're going to use them on top to decorate as well. Um, we just want to add a little bit of finesse, if you like. Uh, obviously this is optional, so if you just want to use jam and the cream, then that's fine also, you know, it's to your taste, you, you do you. Um, but for, for me, I'm going to um, slice some strawberries, I'm going to slice them really thin and then layer them, uh, like overlap them along the, um, in, the, in between the layers. And then on top, we're just going to make them look a little bit fancier um, to give them that little, little bit of excitement to the cake. So just take the heads off and then slice them thinly, simple. So I want to ask you for your advice. Um, I went to the supermarket this morning and there was a lady um, who was in front of me. And obviously now you have to kind of like socially distance from each other. So every time she moves forward, you can move forward. And it's kind of like lined, marked out throughout the whole shop. Um, so we kept bumping into each other through, throughout our shopping experience, if you like. Um, and then at the end, when I paid and left, and I seen her outside, and she had like four bags, like, but they were like their Aldi big bags for life. Um, she's got one life ahead of her. But um, she's quite an old lady, and I felt really bad because I wanted to like say, like, do you want to hand or anything with your shopping? But um, obviously, it's a bit of an awkward time, and I didn't want her to, I didn't want to like approach her, and then her think like I'm walking up to her to give her a handful of Corona. So I didn't really say anything, but I came home and I felt really bad about it, so I don't know if that's bothered me. What do you think? Do you think it's like alright to approach people if you think they need help, or do you think you should just leave it and I don't know whether I've done the right thing, but who knows. Okay, so I've got most of my strawberries um, on a tray. I've just kind of like roughly laid them out, so it's easy to just pick them up and chuck them on. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of um, caster sugar over the top of them, actually. Not a lot, literally just like a pinch. We're back, everything's out of the fridge, and this is the final step. So if you've got this far, then there's not much more that can go wrong. Um, so let's build the cake. So first thing, we're going to just put, um, I'm just going to put a little bit of this Prosecco into a small um, little dish. And then I've just got a pastry little, little egg wash brush. And I'm just going to brush the Prosecco onto the cake. Some people use the kind of sweet syrup, the sugar syrup. But um, we're not trying to get our friends drunk, we're just trying to let them know that they've enjoyed the cake and they've had a good time. So I'm just going to carefully brush the um, Prosecco onto the cake. And I'm going to do that in between each layer as well. Um, okay, so that's ready. So the jam can go on next. This is the jam. It's also probably good to do the jam the night before, but I wasn't really that prepared. I only decided this morning to do a video. So this is going to go on first. You don't want a thick layer, but you just want it nice and evenly spread. Uh, probably the same thickness as the cream, maybe. Um, you want to be able to taste it. And you definitely want to be able to taste the Prosecco, that's for sure. I mean, I'm a bit of a lightweight, but... Look, I'll probably a slice of this cake and I'll be on the floor. Don't spread it all the way to the edge, because when you put your cream on, it's going to make it heavy, and obviously if it presses down, it might all splurge out the side. So it's probably best just to leave like a centimetre from the edge, um, just to be safe. Now we're going to pipe our first layer of the cream on. Okay, here goes. Um, we'll start from the outside and work our way in. Okay. 
Great. Now we're going to put our um, thin strawberries. We're just going to put some. Well, actually, hang on. Let me. We'll overlap them, and then I'll show you once I've finished this layer. We'll, I'll show you what I've done. And like I said earlier, you don't even have to add these strawberries at this point. Um, you could just be the cream and the jam if you wanted. You know, as I keep saying, you do you. I just want you to be happy and enjoy your cake. Um, I was going to actually make it like a really pretty pattern, but... You know, time's of the essence today, so we're just going to... Chip a load on and then worry about spreading them out after. So, if you can see, that's the first layer. Can you see it? Okay, good. Um, that's the first layer. Um, next, we're going to put on our second... Or uh, the middle layer, if you like. Good. These layers are so thin because I, I'm not great at cutting them from like a whole cake. That's why I use the shallow pans um, if I'm doing a three-tiered cake. Okay, so next we're going to do the same again. Um, got our Prosecco, just brush that on, and you're going to repeat the same step again. Don't drown it in Prosecco, I mean no one wants a soggy cake, but just a light brush, you know, you want to be able to taste it. Great, and then, so, jam. Probably would have been sensible to use a palette knife here, but they're just there and I've got a spoon in my hand, so we're just going to use a spoon. <clears throat> when you think you've done enough, back to the cream. Same again, outside in. And finally for this layer, the strawberries. I keep picking that tray up thinking, oh, I'll just make it look neat and overlap them, but let's just check them off. Finally, we've got the last, uh, the top of the cake, we're going to put that on. And we're going to brush, we are going to brush the top layer. Uh, are we going to brush the top layer? No, let's not to brush the top layer. There's probably enough alcohol in there anyway to have a good time. I'm just going to sprinkle a bit of icing sugar over the top layer. And now we need to give it that finesse, that little bit of sexiness to make the cake look good. You know, you want, like, you want that cake when you see someone else on the table next to you in your restaurant and they're like, oh my gosh, that cake looks really good. This is what you want your cake to do. So we're just going to... We're going to do a clock with blobs, um, so like every hour we're going to go 12, 6, 3, 9, and then in between them. So here goes. Three blobs in the middle, so we can put some decent strawberries on them. And then I'm just going to move this behind me. I forgot to do the, the fancy strawberries earlier. So we're going to keep the top on, the, the green bit on, and slice them just like we did before. And then that just goes on. Um, you can do as little or as many of these as you like. I'm just going to probably do four. But I want the fancy strawberries. And then for the last step, if you really want to be fancy, you can probably just put a couple of the smaller strawberries, like the really good looking ones, in the centre. Um, are we going the upside down? So take the top off, let's take the head off. And actually I'm just going to cut them into halves. This is it guys, this is the final, this is the, the end piece, the outcome. Um, so you should have something that looks very similar to this. If you don't, like, what have you been doing? But this is a really easy recipe, and I really hope you try and make it. And if you do, try and send me pictures. Um, because it's really fun, and it's, I like this. You can be as creative or as imaginative as you, as you like. You don't have to add the strawberries. You don't even have to add the jam. You could just do cream strawberries. You could do buttercream. You can do what you want. So just try and experiment, play around. 
the kitchen is your oyster. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time. If you liked it, remember to like it. If you didn't like it, remember to like it. Um, and subscribe if you want to see some more videos. See you soon. Victoria Sponge, done. That's delicious.